What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Kobai Podcast, a Nintendo show, episode 57. I am one of your hosts, Cash Risk, joined alongside Mr. Kobai himself, Zach Risk. Tumble on, little tumble seed. Make did your you make way. Up that theme song for Tumble Seed? Or yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Okay, you can well, contact me. <laughs> I'll sell yeah, you the rights. The developer of that, they uh, can reach out to you, and if they <laughs> tumble on a little tumble scene, <laughs> we got ourselves a theme song for the sequel. Welcome back to Copie Podcast. We got Mario Gomes, Noah Kenny here in the chat. Ready? To, I'm here, ready to talk. I'm ready to listen. Wow, wow, wow. Sorry for the technical difficulties coming into the show. Um, for those of you that were watching live, we forgot to the countdown just disappeared for a moment. I think I hit the wrong button or something, so we just went straight to it. Started live. So if it if, if, if it said three minutes left and you stepped away to go take a little pee pee or a little poop poop, um, we're starting now. So we'll give you a moment to come back, catch your breath, figure out what's going on. Good. There we go. In case you didn't know, we are an all Nintendo podcast that posts each and every week here on YouTube.com slash Copi Gaming, as well as SoundCloud and iTunes and Google Play Music and Stitcher Radio, um, uh, Spotify. I actually don't know if we're on Spotify. Um, but other various podcast services as Copi Podcast. And each and every week we discuss the games we're playing, the latest Nintendo news, and more. Be mm. sure to leave us a review on iTunes. It helps us out a great deal. Subscribe if you're here watching on YouTube. And smash that like button like you're playing Super Smash Bros. And you just got to smash it. Um, we have an awesome episode planned for you guys today. We're going to be talking about that Zelda DLC we actually recorded right before that was announced. And so we haven't had a chance to talk about it. We're also going to be talking about, um, ARMS, Mario Kart 8, of course. Um, we got some Splatoon news, uh, NBA Playgrounds, Neo Geo, Thumper, and also a little game called Whoa Dave, now called Space Dave. And so it's going to be a great show. But first... As we start off every show, we have to talk about what we've been playing. So, Zach, mm-hmm. yeah, you may have you kind of alluded to it with your little theme song there mm-hmm. for the episode. You've been playing some tumble seed. I have. Yep. Tumble I've... my ears with your seeds. Yeah, you haven't been playing too much of it. You haven't like sunk nah. your teeth yeah a ton in yet. I, I tumble my seeds into it, if if you will. Yeah, I have had a few good runs with the game, and it is really hard. And you will probably uh, swear a little bit playing in frustration and dying from stupid ridiculous stuff um but it is really fun and addicting it's kind of that you know like rogue it has that rogue charm to it where you there's that addiction of oh i can do better or maybe i'll get a better kind of randomization next time where i can make it a little bit further and so it really has that like great combination of strategy randomness the unknown the different weapon combos and uh unlockable things kind of like graceful explosion machine although it takes it even further with the um upgrades and random things you can get kind of binding of isaac um esque where there's just so many different items and so and then it has just kind of terraria as aesthetic this nintendo indie vibe that's just been really hitting it up yeah it it just it's a really nice chill game chill indie game that feels experimental um, enough that it's it's unique, but it's also familiar if you're into the rogue kind of genre, and it's very challenging and sometimes a little bit yeah, unfairly that... challenging. Um, but mm-hmm. I do think it's like it's worth it to just as one of those fun. It's not super expensive, so you pick it up and you just yeah. you know. Fifteen, it's, I thought. <clears throat> yeah. Fifteen bucks. Yeah. And uh, I've had I think the furthest I've gotten is about three hundred. Um, I don't know what it is, the measurement units that it goes up, but you're like doing a, a combination, I guess, if you don't really know or if you're not too familiar with what the game is, you're like this little seed and there's the... There's, a tumble seed. Yeah, you're you're this little, basically it's just like a ball, rolling ball on a little, um, like a seesaw sort of thing that you're kind of moving up this wooden plank that the seed is on and you're avoiding all the obstacles and there's some really crazy enemies some of them that will like follow you or um like the entire level or just come running at you or exploding just popping out of holes and stuff and it's just kind of sometimes it can get really crazy but that's kind of the excitement is that you kind of have to have that i mean mario kart 8 can also be kind of unfair in that way you know sometimes it's not all there is that random uh, the RNG sort of aspect to it where, you know, you're not going to be 
you know, sometimes it's going to be cheap and you're going to get upset and frustrated after you made it really far. And, um, so yeah. there is that you have to keep that in mind. So you have to be kind of more mature and meditative with it, I guess I would say. And yeah, I, I picked it up. Um, I'm excited to play more of it. Like I'm not just going to, you know, I'm not going to just going to throw the game away. I have, I actually have quite a bit of games on my switch now though. Um, I picked it up, um, right when it came out, uh, 15 bucks and it the only thing my only complaint with it I loved the visuals I loved the music I loved the idea and the concept of going it was a little confusing but you I just imagine that you learn more and more of the mechanics and stuff as you go forward my big thing was it just didn't seem the the whole aspect of it is you're kind of tip uh, tipping a little teeter totter up a up a map right kind of shimming your way up a map mm-hmm. and the seed tumbles back and forth on it. And it's not as quick as I wish it was. Like I wish you could like boost yep. the sensitivity, which I think would affect the overall gameplay if you did that. But I wish you at least had the option maybe to do that. And that was my only thing was I wish it was a little bit of a quicker, snappier game. Yeah, um, like a trigger you know, that kind of activates a short boost or something. Um, yeah, because that's the thing about the like, graceful explosion it. machine is like you can go like that game's so quick and responsive. Mario Kart's quick and responsive. Um, even Snake Pass to a degree was kind of like, you know, you're slithering, you can kind of gain up momentum right. as you go. And this just seemed like a very slow and methodical game, which, I mean, it's, it's probably nice to have that kind of different pace on the Switch. So you kind of slow down and think about what you're doing. But it, when I had like Mario Kart to play, I wasn't like quick to jump on it. But Yeah, but there's another aspect to it, I guess, is that, and I'll have to find out the more I play, is there's only like four real levels to it, I guess, when you're climbing mm-hmm. up this mountain. And to reaching the top. And so I'm not sure exactly how it works. Like once you get to the top, if you move to an, another area and you keep going up or if it's like just a um, like a time trial, like how quickly you can get up. Um, so I'm not sure yeah. exactly how it all works. Well, it's a rogue. And, yeah. And so like Rogue Legacy only has like four different maps to it, I think, as well. But it's just all about the bosses and the enemies and the things popping out. So right. And there's it's a one really of they could add other levels too. Really detailed leaderboard. Like it goes back for like five, like May fifth, May fourth, May third, like of who was on the leaderboards for that day. And, oh, that's really um, nice. Yeah, and so and there's daily challenges, and I, I would assume they'll probably add an update in the future that Reminds adds me of even Ollie more. Ollie. They have yeah. daily challenges and leaderboards. Man, Ollie Ollie needs to come to the switch. And I really want to find out who did the music. Crap. It sounds the music sounds so much like Terraria that it's just. I'm like, did the same person do this or they were consciously trying to make it sound like that? Because it just has all those like, hmm. like yeah. sounds to it. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's really difficult though and kind of one of those that you might play a couple, try it a couple times and then go back to Mario Kart because it's a little yeah. frustrating. But good to have there as something to take a break with. So, And then otherwise, yeah, I've definitely. been playing a ton of Mario Kart 8. Like, yeah, speaking of Mario Kart 8, I've been playing tons of that too. Um, got some B-roll footage playing so you guys can look at that. Um, yesterday, I, I've i been playing lots of Destiny still. Destiny's still kind of been my main game um, as, you know, like when I'm sitting down in front of an afternoon to play a game, it's probably going to be Destiny for now. Um, although I'm getting very, very close to platinuming it and getting the record book all filled out and putting that game away for good. Gameplay reveals in a couple weeks for Destiny 2. Super exciting um, for those of you that care. Anyway, though, but, but beyond that, when I'm at work or when I'm away or when I'm playing with my wife, we've been playing, obviously, tons of Mario Kart. Um, I actually took an Uber the other day to get to work. It was a half-hour commute, and I played Mario Kart, and it was the coolest thing in the world to be playing Mario Kart 8 on the go mm-hmm. like that. Um, but we actually had a picnic yesterday, my wife and I did. It was beautiful out. Uh, we went to Lake of the Isles in Minnesota. If you've ever been there, it's a beautiful lake. Um, we set up a little picnic um had some egg salad sandwiches some baby carrots and we brought the switch along and we played mario kart and one two switch at the park and it was the coolest thing we were the people from the commercials um mario kart i have to say sucks in the sunlight yeah um you there i have some footage i didn't record it or didn't um upload it because obviously you can record it from mario kart you just internally um i'll have to upload it maybe to the channel maybe have it as b-roll next week or something um, because we did the race, what is it, Dolphin Shoals, where you go down to the cave and there's a little eel down there. And it's so dark that I could not see where I was going. And there's footage of me. I'm in 12th place and just completely just running into the wall. And she makes me use motion controls because it kind of puts us at an even playing field. So we're doing like 200cc motion controls, you know, um, pretty fun actually to kind of have to work with that. 
Um, she makes you have to we, do motion controls when you play with her. And when I play with her, yeah. Yeah, because um, otherwise I'm just always getting first place and she like can't catch up to me. Oh, really? And so I've been using motion controls lately and it's actually pretty fun. Yeah. Because like it kind of challenges me a little bit and I, mm-hmm. I am still doing pretty good because like, I just kind of – you get a little bit of the mechanics. The hardest thing is drifting because you have to kind of like nudge your hands and kind of do like a little shimmy. Um, but she actually beat me a few times when we were playing out in the sun um, because, I don't know, maybe I, I can do use like sun johns or something. But um, she's, <laughs> she's, she's, she's very good at motion controls. It's surprising. Yeah, just how like I've never seen someone that. I've been wanting to. I don't know why I don't try it just more for fun like that because I've been. I keep like wanting to, but then I just inevitably just play it like normally because I. I don't know what I've been doing a lot is going through like of course the 200 CC to try to get all the golds and um, going especially through the time attacks and some of those are ridiculous how perfect the Nintendo Shadow the Ghost uh, people. Oh yeah. And I've gotten a lot of them so far in the 200 CC going through, but some of them it's just like you got to play it over and over again because they really did it perfect. Their runs, it's like yeah. all the shortcuts you have to nail, but it's really good practice too because you start nailing these stages and getting, you know, you know how to nail the shortcut every single time. It's yeah. really cool. I've been playing the game a lot more I think than I actually did the Wii U version, which has been kind of surprising I think and. So I'm um, yeah. anxious to see like what my time played will be because it's been like nonstop really. Yeah, we played that quite a bit. Um, I think we just did like one Grand Prix and then we were like, okay, it's too bright. But then we did one two switch because we didn't have to look at the screen and we were in the park playing one two switch and so like we're doing yoga poses by the lake. <laughs> it was the most embarrassing yet exhilarating thing to like, you know, they get the little switch thing and it's like you know really stretch those arms yeah and flex that, that leg and we're like giggling and like rattling doing these yoga poses yeah and another cool thing that we did because people are walking by like it's min it's minneapolis people are there's tons of people at the park um people are walking by just staring at us and we did um the board game mode actually where you do team battles but we just had it so it's the two of us mm-hmm. And that's actually really cool because it tallies your score as you go through different multi, um, go through multiple games. Right. And so, like, you'll, for example, you'll do, um, like, you'll roll the dice, you'll land on quick draw, you do quick draw, you roll the dice again, and then at the end of the game, whoever had the most, like, it shows and all that. So it's actually kind of cool for keeping score, but also encouraging you to do different games. And so, yeah, we did quick draw out in the open. We did, um, we're over there, like, by the lake milking cows. And just like people can walk by and they can hear like <laughs> we're squeezing our hands <laughs> and just like get really get in the motion yeah and you can hear the squirts of the milk and it was it was really awesome to be those people at the park that are actually playing and we were having a blast like mm. if if Michaela would win you know she'd dance and all that be happy because it's just awesome when you beat the other person and so um, that was really fun. So that's another thing I guess I could say for the what we've been playing this week. Yeah, um, well, once you switch out in public was uh, is a fun thing to try. Take your switch out to a park and play out with a friend. Just at a picnic ba- um, like bench or table or a basket or whatever. Yeah. And um, the only thing that sucked was they did you can't skip a game when you do that mode. And oh. we did Joy-Con rotation and we didn't have a flat surface to set our Joy Cons on. Mm. Um, and that game is especially like very picky about it like telephone you can just kind of set on the grass and pick up the joy con but when you're doing joy con rotation or as they would say joy con rotation then it kind of sucks but otherwise it was a blast yeah and that game relies just so much on auditory cues and everything that it just really doesn't rely so heavily it's what it's kind of hard to explain to a lot of people and it's like we're gonna play one two switch and they've never played it and they're like so what do we need and it's just like just these two yeah. little remotes basically and they're like wait yeah. what yeah but that's really awesome so yeah it was fun i forgot what other games we played like what ones i know we did copy dance which was i was actually pretty embarrassed at that because it was like you know it judges you on your energy so you have to like be really dramatic with your movements and it's like people are walking by and i'm dancing i'm like uh, i don't want to do this <laughs> but um other than that it was really fun so yeah. So yeah, that, that's that for all we've been playing. Um, hopefully, we'll have some more details on you know as we continue to play Mario Kart Eight. I know we want to maybe start a tournament one of these weeks for Mario Kart Eight to get the Copai Nation playing with us. Um, if you guys want to play, mm-hmm. we'll maybe have to give more details on that like via Twitter or our Facebook page. So 
There's a little plug to go follow us on Twitter, Copai Gaming, or find us on Facebook as Copai Gaming. But yeah, yeah. I, I am also still playing a little bit of Breath of the Wild. Like, I haven't finished that oh, game, yeah. and I've been going back in. I did another um, one of the Divine Beasts and just been, have been um, going through, now going through some more of those shrines and just kind of getting back in the groove of it all. I, I had kind of yeah. stopped um, at the end of the <clears throat> semester at right before going into a Divine Beast, and it was like, this is kind of one of those, I'm going to have to focus for a little bit. And I like mm-hmm. to kind of do that on the big screen and have it be an epic experience. And so I was like, I'm going to wait until I'm kind of finished with this stuff. And so I yeah. went in, got back in that, and that was awesome going through that Divine Beast. I don't really want to talk about that too much and tell our spoiler cast. Yeah, but no. just have been getting back into that and really thinking it's it's just such an amazing game. And, yeah, it's perfect. And with this DLC coming up, I think it'll be kind of a nice perfect like uh, segue for me into it kind of as i'm wrapping up the game so i'm excited for that yeah yeah i'm excited for the spoiler cast and yeah the divine beast you just did we kind of talked about it behind the scenes and that's like my favorite one it's so awesome so i'm excited just to be able to talk about every aspect of it um just to reiterate we won't talk about zelda spoilers as a matter of fact we're gonna be talking about the dlc later and the b-roll i have is the nintendo treehouse footage from e3 like nothing new like we're not showing like anything like you know b-roll even from the trailers because the trailers pull from so many different parts of it that you can't really know for sure what's going to pull so Mm -hmm. um, don't worry about spoilers here until we specifically say it's a spoiler cast yeah awesome that you're still playing that um i want to i want to get back into it probably maybe with the dlc but i'm also want i need to hunt more uh, korok seeds too um anyway it's time to unclog the Nintendo pipeline. Each week, we take our plungers and stick them deep <laughs> into Nintendo's pipes and unclog item after item to discover what is going on in the world of Mario and Friends. And this week, we have 14 <laughs> huge, beefy, corn-fed pipe plug and news bits that need to be dealt with. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of organized it in a little bit of a different way today. Let us know what you think about the news section starting with number one generic Nintendo news, so kind of encompassing just the random little bits and pieces. Um, With the first piece of news being Nintendo has teamed up with t-shirt company Uniqlo for fan-designed t-shirts. The news uh, via my Nintendo News reports that Nintendo teamed up with Uniqlo, a Japanese casual wear designer, manufacturer, and retailer to host a contest for fans to create Nintendo-themed t-shirts. Miyamoto himself... Mr. Mario got to choose the top spot with the lucky winner grabbing $10,000 in prize money. All winners have now um, been picked and their t-shirt designs are available to buy. There are an impressive 25 designs in total with adult size selling for only $14.90 and kids um, ones going for $9.90. Splatoon, Metroid, Pikmin, and Mario are all in there. Uh, You can check out the full list of winners and how to purchase. Um, I just just Google Uniqlo. That's U N I. Q L O and Nintendo, you'll be able to find those t-shirts. Um, I actually saw a few of them. They looked really, really cool. They kind of remind me of the Vans thing they did where they had, you know, the kind of graphic design van stuff. So some of them are super simple though. Like I'm like, how do they win? It's just literally Mario on a t-shirt, mm. <laughs> but you know, I guess that's, that's, it's well, well designed. I wish I would have known that contest. I could have done something. Um, Miyamoto's like a busy 000. man. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. You just, I like that one. It's Mario. Let's go with that one. Um, the next piece of news. The composer of Deus Ex and Unreal is working with Retro Studios. Um, we haven't heard much about the beloved Retro Studios for quite some time. However, news has emerged today that Alexandre Brandon, who is the composer of Deus Ex and Unreal, is now working with Retro Studios. Um, my Nintendo News reports that Brandon wouldn't give away any secrets. But he did say that, quote, work is incredibly exciting and the team is awesome. (laughs) I like that you pronounce that Alexander Brandon and he's probably listening and he's like, "Ah, it's just Alexander Brandon. (laughs) (laughs) I just go by Alex. Yeah. It's like nothing. (laughs) But uh, (laughs) yeah, no, I thought of that after I saw that. Although, I mean, he works on, you know, Deus Ex. Yeah. I mean, he's probably, he probably got a little bit of class to him. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, that's a, that's super. This exciting thing about that is just to hear anything about Retro Studios. We're kind of wondering what they're working on. My only fear, though, is like I want Retro Studios to come to E3 and be like, "Yo, we got Metroid coming out this year," 
And if they just hired on a composer, like, what's he doing? Like, mm-hmm. is the music not ready for whatever they're working on? So it's not coming this year unless he's for something else. I don't know what's going on with Retro Studios. I just want to know. And it, it does make me think, though, that it could be a Metroid Prime sort of game uh-huh. because it's probably not Donkey Kong again. Like, they did they did Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, and they had, who is it, Grant Kirkhope or something? Or David Wise for yeah. that? Um, probably. Yeah. I don't think this guy, I don't think Alexandra Brandon is doing Well, I mean, Deus Ex is very similar kind of to the Metroid like if they did a style of Metroid yeah, game that was kind of like that, that would be awesome. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, moving on in the news, Nintendo has filed a trademark for a Bowser spin-off game. Um, Yoshi, Luigi, Wario, and Captain Toad have all got their own games. I like how Captain Toad's thrown in there because like he literally was made for his own game. <laughs> it's not like Captain Toad got his own game. It's he had. I guess I, maybe I don't know. Uh, after her first appearing in the Mario series, but the plumber's nemesis Bowser has yet to feature in his own spinoff. Um, although he did have Bowser's Inside Story. Yeah, that's and true. He's, he's pre- very prominent in um, Paper Mario as well. Uh, however, regardless, it looks like King Koopa's lucky day might be just around the corner. Nintendo has recently filed a trademark for Koopa, Bowser's Japanese name. And if they bring the game to the West and it's called Koopa or like King Koopa or something, I'm going to lose my crap. That'd be awesome. I know. That's, that's what I was called anticipating. Uh, and it seems like that'd be an epic E3 reveal if they were actually going to do something like that. I mean, hopefully it'd be ready in time for that. You know, I mean, that seems a little bit soon for how we're kind of hearing about it. But, you know, I mean, they could be trying to register it before E3 kind of rolls out. That could be kind of a reason for it. Um, or yeah. we could hear about it like in a later direct or something, or it might not be anything. But it does sound very probable and promising because of this news information. And that sounds just awesome. We've always, I think we've talked about it on the show before, just that Bowser, a Bowser game you know, would be awesome. Yeah. That he's needed. We just need like, we need his story to be told in more, and less of the, the Bowser's inside story sort of way. I think in a, yeah. in more of and him the Koopalings taking up. are like, right. For something like that too. Like just put you in a story, maybe based where you play as the Koopalings yeah. and you can play as Bowser as well or something like that. Like there's tons of possibilities. Like they haven't really used him as a prominent character in anything. Um, seems like they're doing a lot with the Koopalings or even Bowser jr. Because, my only fear of the Bowser game is just Bowser's so slow and clunky that it'd be hard to make a game that's not like, you know, Paper Mario or something where he's the lead character or, you know, like the Mario RPG series. But Baby Bowser is so young and nimble that he'd be a great lead. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, then then you don't have Bowser as the lead. But mm-hmm. I think I think you could do something with that. Definitely. Um, but yeah, that's that for the generic Nintendo news. Just kind of some stuff that was thrown out um, in the ether. Well, and uh, moving... one, th- oh, one last oh. thing. Godzilla has been kind of making a comeback in the whole King Kong Skull Island, which mm-hmm. Bowser kind of kind of plays into that sort of uh, at least Godzilla sort of thing. And that'd be really yeah. kind of cool if they kind of made a play on the whole Godzilla thing. So And Donkey Kong could be the villain. It could be like Godzilla versus King Kong with Koopa versus Donkey Kong. Yeah. Totally. There you go. Yeah. Million million dollar idea. Yep. Um moving on, we have some Mario Kart 8 news. We're going to plow through this one real quick because we've been talking a ton about Mario Kart 8. Um but the Mario Kart producer revealed the origins of the game and I actually found this to be kind of interesting. Um via my Nintendo news, it was reported that Retro Gamer has conducted a huge interview with the producers behind Super Mario Kart, Shigeru Miyamoto and director is Hideki Kono and Tadishi Yugiyama. The interview examines the untold story of the popular franchise and contains plenty of tidbits that you may not know, including the fact that the game was originally an F-Zero title. Um, And so you can go head over to Retro Gaming to read that full interview. But the rest of the interview details how by making F-Zero a multiplayer game, which is where this all started, they were making a multiplayer version of F-Zero, it required the courses to be smaller if they were going to have four different screens on one screen um, to have the four player co-op and so it could the snes could only handle so much and so if they had four times of that they had to make the tracks four times smaller than a normal f-zero course and because of that f-zero was typically super fast 
and so they needed to slow down the vehicles to make it so they could fit on the small courses. And because of that, they changed the vehicles to carts, which required the you could see the racers then inside of the carts. And because the F Zero racers weren't super interesting to look at inside of the carts, they decided to go with the cart riders to actually be someone more recognizable, including Mario, Yoshi, Luigi, Peach. And so then they're like, okay, we have Mario Kart. Huh. Which is just like, that's awesome that it started out of, as so, F-Zero. Yeah, the, the and way just that do all of that. Some of these Nintendo games, they evolve so strangely. It's yeah. It's like, what, what do we hear about? There was like some Zelda game that started out as, or they were using like in Splatoon, they were using like Link sprites or something. One of these yeah. games that... And that's just always strange how they were talking about originally, or I think it was Captain Toad actually, um, was originally yeah, a... Yeah, because Splatoon started out as noses and you sneezed all over everyone or something. Mm. But you couldn't see, they didn't know like what the front of a nose, or no, you were like little tofu boxes with a nose and the nose would shoot out ink. And the only reason the tofu like pieces had noses was because they needed to know where the front of the tofu thing was. Something yeah. weird like that. Well, I know that I know in Captain yeah. Toad they like they were going with the whole mechanic that Link doesn't jump at all, and so yeah. a, and so that was weird. They were using him as like a placeholder, and then they decided like Toad would also work because he like doesn't really jump or something. <laughs> I don't know. It was he weird. Down to his backpack or something. Yeah. Yeah. And so that whole that's how that evolved, and that's how a lot of these projects seem to evolve very strangely once you actually hear the background story. But that's really cool. Cool yeah. tidbit. Hopefully we get an F Zero game like on the Switch in the future. Well it's funny that they even said all that and they do have F Zero tracks in Mario Kart. Yeah. Um like it's just interesting how that all has come kind of full circle. Yeah, hopefully they have some F Zero. Seems though like the big thing with F Zero is they don't know how to figure out how to do co op now. Or I guess now they can probably figure it out. So Yeah, I think they already solved that issue in a in a previous F Zero game. Uh like on the GameCube yeah. maybe. But I, I'm wondering, too, and it just seems with the whole, like, we talked about the 2DS last week, like, it seems really they've been going with this marketing of the more mature, you know, hardcore base is on the Switch and put things like, hey, Pikmin, which seems is appearing to be a little bit more of an easier childlike title yeah. uh, on the 2DS as sort of the launch title for when the new one hits. Um, it seems like an F-Zero game... Maybe the more mature Koopa game and these sort of things, a Metroid would be more likely and um, they'd be more willing now because they just see that there's a more dedicated audience on the Switch that will probably buy it, like whatever they put out from what they're seeing, you know? So that's yeah, Yeah, definitely good point. Um, Moving on to other Mario Kart 8 news, we have that Rainbow Road was voted as the best track in Mario Kart 8. Uh, via my Nintendo News, it was reported that Nintendo UK recently ran a poll asking this very question, and the answer was tricky, but um, the overall consensus was that it was Rainbow Road, uh, with Hyrule Circuit, Mount Wario, and Bowser's Castle being um, second, third, and fourth. Um, so, yeah, I agree with Hyrule Circuit. That well, I don't like necessarily agree that's number two. I don't need to get into the weeds of that, but I agree that that track is awesome and i think that mount wario is really awesome yeah definitely. i love that going from point a to point b i don't know if bowser's castle was maybe top four tracks for me from mario kart but um, it's certainly great and but... the the rainbow road that it's referring to is that one where you're going down kind of right it's or the it's the i think there's one playing right now in the b-roll people will see in a second um, yeah where you go it's... through those little uh launch things and, yeah, and the hype trains in the background and or is it the like the final uh is it the dark one the kind of on the main title screen where you kind of see the overhead of yeah. the yeah that one okay where you're like in paris or something like you're going around the eiffel tower or something but it's like the mushroom tower or whatever I'm yeah not too sure yeah i think people know what i'm talking about yeah that that one is uh, yeah it's what people seem to pick the most i think the most challenging track of the whole one is is maybe the the more space um rainbow road where you're you're really? going down I think the snes one's hard oh that one i think the, is the easiest one, one. That one's no like that a, one's hard man that one there's like, like the no guardrails the easiest and it's really pretty and lit up all nice mm-hmm. like big no yeah that one's awesome that was hard but i hate, I hate the one the one i've been trying the on 200 cc to get the one uh 
with the rainbow road where you're going down and it's in space and i'm just like ah all these turns and i go falling off i'm going so fast and it's, yeah. it's so frustrating but the snes one i have really no difficulties with and this is probably a good time too to talk about noah kinney's question in the chat he asked if what if they added 250 cc oh yeah and i was that'd thinking i think that's maybe be like, like game breaking yeah well i would think i was wondering if they might put like a 300 or or something in there um <laughs> i feel like there's some moments where like we're at 200 cc where you go off a ramp or something and your guy just like skips over half the course because he's just yeah. gliding so fast well we've seen okay. on some mods of the original mario kart 8 on the wii u that some people have done that like they did on the wii where they did like 900 cc and stuff <laughs> like they do yeah. like 500 i've seen and um that was pretty insane they were like doing some it just it gets kind of broken but i think yeah. that i think if they put it out as like this is totally just for fun and it's going yeah. to be madness um yeah that that'd be really cool um, and I would totally play it, like, even though I knew it was just going to be, like, all over the place. Like, just yeah. warn it. Like, have a little thing that pops up. Like, you may experience some turbulence. Well, I guess I guess you have, like, mushrooms and stuff that you can use to go pretty fast at 200cc. So mm, Yeah. Uh, but imagine, like, being at 300cc and then using mushrooms and superstars and all that at 300. Yeah. It's like your cheeks are rippling. <laughs> yeah, but then it'd be truly deluxe, I think, you know. It yeah, needs maybe, to live yeah. up to that name. <laughs> I'm pretty content with the deluxeness so far. <laughs> um, speaking, though, of the sales and the success of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, we have some rapid-fire stuff here as far as numbers. And we don't mean to bore you, but this is some pretty exciting stuff for the shareholders, and so it should be exciting for us. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe passes 1 million sales worldwide in its first weekend. And I think we've all already talked about this, but there's like an official news thing now reported via my Nintendo news that it's the fastest selling Mario Kart game in the franchise history. Um, Data Lover X or no Z Huge EX is reporting that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe passed 1 million sales during its first weekend. The game joins the well-received Persona 5 in the million sellers list for April 2017. Um, and then I think it was with 459,000 combined package and digital sales in the u.s on launch day alone mario kart 8 deluxe for the nintendo switch system is the fastest selling game in the long-running mario kart series the previous record holder for the highest first day sales in the franchise was mario kart wii with approximately 433 um, when it launched in 2008 um, with an attach rate of 45 percent now for the switch um, and then now, um, to date, more than 2.7 Nintendo Switch systems have been sold globally. Um, and also, this is, I think, a new bit of news. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has received the most perfect review scores than any other Mario Kart game. And with a Metacritic score of 93, the critically acclaimed title is the highest rated game in the series in 15 years, tying the overall review score of Mario Kart Super Circuit for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, that's strange that Super Circuit got such a high yeah like, on the game boy man yeah because well, i mean we was awesome and i would say that that was much better than probably Advanced, just people freaking out that mario kart was on the game and boy DS. yeah yeah i think yeah it was pretty cool but it was basically <laughs> some reviewer like oh i think there was like a kind of lesser version than the than the cart one although there was it was a little bit upgraded in graphics and kind of prettier and stuff i it was fun yeah. at the time I remember that when the Game Boy Advance first came out, it was like Konami Crazy Racers was the one of the launch titles, I think. And it was kind of a Mario Kart ripoff um, that was basically the same as Super Circuit ended up being. And, you know, they were nothing super special. So that just kind of surprises me. But they were yeah. kind of cool for the time. It's kind of yeah. like if, if we heard, like, Sonic Advance, I guess. Well, I mean, Skyward Sword got a 10 from IGN. Like, it's just kind of like the hype maybe in the moment. It's like, yeah, yeah it's yeah, so totally. hard. But yeah, looking back, that. Skyward Sword is not a 10. Um, I moving don't know about on that. In the, oh, I haven't played moving it. Moving on in the news, we have some ARMS discussion. Um, in a recent interview with Edge Magazine, ARMS producer talked about a more traditional control scheme for the game. Um, as we've known, I think it's just being reiterated here that, that this is great news for those hoping to play the game more casually or in a handheld mode. Um, but some of the other highlights of the interview include that first and foremost, ARMS doesn't include or doesn't require that you use motion controls, um, yet the producer says that it does feel the most at home with them, which is mm -hmm. to be expected. 
Um, they also said that fighting games are not in a niche genre. Um, they describe ARMS as a fiercely competitive game that anyone can play uh, by making the ARM movements easily seeable and memorization of combos. And so basically they were saying that like they don't think that this is just going to be isolated to the fighting community. Um, that's going to kind of be like, you know, what we see with Mario Kart and Smash, that it's just like super accessible, kind of that Nintendo um, approach to things. Mm -hmm. um, but they also reiterated that you can't just wave your hands around that you really need to study not only the punches, but like the actual trajectory and that it's accessible to people because you can see your arms. It's not like another game where, you know, you like Street Fighter, for example, you can't see the combos. You have to, you know, if you're watching live, you don't know what buttons they're pressing. You just see the outcome. But with arms, you can really study like, oh, wow, they've moved their fist like that and they punched like that, which is going to be kind of a cool approach to maybe spectating the game. Yeah. As far as the future of ARMS, they said, quote, it would be like a dream for this to become a franchise spanning decades, but right now, only a small number of people in the world know about ARMS, those who closely follow new games and technology. First, I'd like those people to play ARMS and have fun with it. This game offers a brand new play style, brand new characters, and brand new strategic gameplay. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was a nice, like, kind of humble yeah, approach to it, like... I want this to be amazing, but it's kind of interesting to hear kind of like a Nintendo developer say, like, only a small amount of people even know about us. <laughs> like, I know, yeah. That must, that must be so weird. Well, and it's, um, it kind of leads back to the point, too, that I was, I've was i mentioned a few times that I really think that we need to get our hands on it before we get a full understanding of yeah. uh, what it is, kind of like Splatoon, where um, it, it really, I think, once people got their hands on it, then it became the hit that it is. And people really yeah. understood it. And once they saw the developers really supporting it and just the craze that it became, I don't think that it was initially that that craze when we first heard about it at that E3, you know. But once people actually got their hands on it, and so I really, yet again, anybody out there from Nintendo's listening, give us a little uh, test fire of arms, please. Hey, Bill Trennan. I want it. Yeah, Bill. Come on the show. Yeah. Episode 100. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're getting closer and closer, Bill. You gotta gotta notice us. He did like, or no, he retweeted us ah. the other the other week uh, on the night of the Switch launch. Um, he retweeted a, a picture of me being at the launch event. Mm -hmm. um, well, not me, but I took the picture at the launch event. He retweeted it. But yeah, so we've been noticed. He knows Copai exists. Um, in the last bit of Splatoon news, I don't have any pictures to put up, but we we did get a closer look at the neon yellow Joy-Con controllers. Um, my Nintendo News reports that this week in Japan, Nintendo had been hosting special events in stores for the forthcoming game ARMS. Um, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was also playable. They had display units that showcased the neon yellow Joy-Cons. Reportedly, this is the first time we've seen them out in the wild. I um, mean, you can check out the photos at Nintendo Everything's website. Personally, I thought they looked uh, very, very, like, kind of green, like yellow-greenish. Um, not really the arms yellow. It seemed like a really kind of um, different sort of neon type. Um, but I'm going to get them. I'm going to get every Joy-Con color yeah. I can. And I'm going to have this whole shelf filled with Joy-Cons. Yeah. And when people come over to play the Switch, I'm going to be like, pick a Joy-Con. They can just pick whatever color they want. And it'll be that'll be my humble abode yeah i think i might pass on these ones i'm just not a huge fan <laughs> of i'm not a huge fan of neon yellow sort of thing but it's not um, your first go-to color <laughs> yeah uh, i don't know I'm, I'm still waiting for like a nicer blue or purple or even like some sunset colors or so something some, you know, some gamecube purple or some awesome. yeah or some like transparency things like the pro controller just do some, like, because I guess there's a lot of parts inside the Joy-Cons. Like, why not show them off, all that tech? But, yeah, I think that definitely they need to do stuff like, uh, I, I don't know why they don't put out a little demo that's just one stage, one char two characters that, you know, you can try out and just let us have some fun with it for a little bit. But at least they're doing these events where they're taking it around and showing it off to people. I think hopefully, like, maybe some Best Buys get it out um, so that people can go. Like, maybe you could go get a little taste of it or something before it comes out would be nice. Yeah. Um, but So at least they do stuff like that. But I'm really excited for it. Noah Kenny writes in and says, with the red and blue con joy controllers. Wait, something. No. 
yeah. With the red and blue Joy-Cons and yellow Joy-Cons coming out in June, do you think this could mean that Nintendo could possibly, although unlikely, release different colored Switch Pro controllers as well? So mm. we're over here fantasizing about different Joy-Cons. What about the Pro controller? Because we have, you get the Xbox Design Lab with different colored Xbox controllers. You have PlayStation 4's DualShock 4 getting, you know, the color of Nathan Drake's shirt printed out as a controller. Mm-hmm. Could we get different colored actual pro controllers i see um, I, I, what were you gonna say something i don't know i th- I, think that it's, I think that there's maybe a slight chance but i see it as more unlikely and this is why um because i think that i see the joy cons as a little more collectible um yeah. and a little bit um less pricey i mean they are pricey if you get them in the bundle but you can always get them separately if you just want to collect like the one color um you know sort of thing I feel yeah, I think like manufacturing's easier too to make yeah. like a different Joy-Con shell than it would be to make an entirely new right pro controller kind of casing and the buttons. and just the the audience that will pick it up, you know, it's yeah. um it's a much tinier audience. Uh people will be picking up Joy-Cons like with the games. Um, yeah. and I don't think they will necessarily be doing it with and another thing is, you know, I think a lot of these games are going to be promoting especially like ARMS, for example. Mm. Um, is promoting the Joy-Con usage primarily, and they're selling the battery pack add-on. Um, with Splatoon, um, it does seem maybe a little bit more like they're supporting the Pro Controller, kind of going with that. Like that's maybe the definitive way, definitive way to play. And so maybe yeah. they would have a special Splatoon Pro Controller. Like I would see if they do do it, maybe much more limited than they do like with the Joy Cons. And for titles that they specifically think more hardcore people would want to get it for. And so yeah. um, a Splatoon 1, uh, I don't know. I can't even think of another game in the future. But maybe if they did like a shooting game um, again that's different than Splatoon. Like a, maybe Metroid or something like that would yeah. work out for it. But I don't, know, I don't I think, think it would have seen, would... seen something maybe by now. Well, yeah, I, don't, I think if we don't see anything at E3 for like you know this like Mario Odyssey launching with a special pro controller or something, because we got news of the yellow Joy Cons like very early on with the arms marketing, mm-hmm. like they were kind yeah. of pushing those right away um, to kind of get people interested and to have you know tech demo or you know to have them on display at these kind of you know special events and stores and all of that. Right. So we're, if it, if at E3 we haven't seen anything for a pro controller and if we are not getting a special com- pro, pro controller with Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, or you know even Zelda like that we didn't get one with that, um, I don't think we're gonna see it. And like look at the even the Wii U for example, we had a black and a white Wii U pro controller, but we had like twenty thousand different Wii motes. Like, it just seems like their kind of, you know, big yeah. MO is to kind of go more in the route of customizing the kind of more remote controlled controllers. Although we did see a ton of different GameCube style things, I think from like, who was it? Like Hori or something? Yeah. They had a ton of different ones. So we may see like pro controllers developed by them, but yeah, not Nintendo. Mm hmm. Oh, where, oh, where are we? Moving on in the news. We got some stuff to talk about with Splatoon. UK publisher Edge Magazine managed to catch up with Splatoon producer Hyashi Nogami, who has discussed a number of things, including the popularity of the ink-based shooter as well as the new Salmon Run mode for the game. Um, On why Splatoon was so successful, they said, quote, We felt that one of the biggest reasons so many people played Splatoon is because even at a glance, they could see that it was a lot of fun. And how there was the colors and the vibrancy and all of that. They go on to say in the interview that people could just look over and they'd see like, oh, I want to play that because it just looks like it's just mayhem. Uh, which I can get, although I would say that looking at it, you don't nearly get a scope of what it's like until you actually played it. Which mm-hmm. was the big problem at the first E3. Um, as far as the relative lack of um, new Splatoon 2 information, they said, quote, we don't want to go. Um, we don't want to go ham-fistedly giving out new information only to cause confusion. Instead, we'd like to give thing. Uh, we'd like to introduce things one by one, and I think they said that you can kind of expect that with future, you know, updates. That the initial game's not going to launch with everything. They're kind of going to ease things out one by one, just like they did with the original game, mm-hmm. um, which I like. It kind of gives you a chance to focus on everything, um, little bit by bit. And Nintendo seems to be doing that in general with the Nintendo Switch to kind of have things introduced one by one, like not a ton of indies all at once. 
And the last thing with Splatoon is that they said um, with the new Salmon Run mode, um, that the higher the player's skill level, the more difficult the missions they can challenge themselves to. So most likely you're going to kind of rank up your system just like you did with the original Splatoon. I thought this was interesting though. We also wanted to add depth to the world that the Inklings inhabit. We developed Salmon Run or Salmon Run with both of those aims in mind. And so um, for those of you that don't know, I believe that Splatoon 1 had a ton of lore and kind of hidden mechan- or hidden history to it. If you were to read, you know, the Sunken Scrolls and the weapon descriptions and kind of some of the history of all of that, um, it seems like they're kind of doing that once again with Splatoon and using these kind of new game modes to develop that even more, which I love that they're continuing to develop that and not just abandon some of the stuff they established in the first one because some of the first stuff was so cool how they made this whole universe and this world of Inklings. And so Mm -hmm. super exciting. So, so hyped for that game. The test fire was awesome. Um, would love another one just because I want to play the game even more. It just feels so good. Yeah. I need to go finish Splatoon on the Wii U. I finished yeah. the, the story mode. But, oh, man, I just don't want to pick up that clunky gamepad anymore. I <laughs> wish know. I could use, like, the classic controller or just something else. It just feels strange picking up that pro, uh, the gamepad now. But, you know. Uh, real quick and kind of random news. Uh, Whoa, Dave has a successor called Space Dave, and it's coming to the Nintendo Switch. Space Dave, the spiritual successor to Whoa Dave, is coming to Nintendo Switch, and according to developer Choice Provisions, the game will soon be released on Nintendo's latest console, though a specific launch date has yet to be announced. Space Dave tasks you with defending your ground against an alien onslaught by protecting your terrain from their endless arsenal of weapons. And if you manage to survive long enough, you might be able to build up your own arsenal and collect enough power-ups to turn the tides against your would-be alien captors. Hmm. Sounds awesome. Um, Just another fun indie game to play. Speaking of fun indie games to play, NBA Playgrounds is also coming. We actually have some information on that later in the downloads for the week. Um, But a little bit of sad news with that is that the game won't initially launch with all the features for the Nintendo Switch. My Nintendo News reports that when the NBA Playground game or when NBA Playgrounds launches across all platforms next week, the Switch version will be without a very important feature, online play. Um, and before you freak out, um, a representative said that they have recently confirmed that a patch will be will enable the feature just, quote, a few days after launch. And so that tells me to pick up the game uh, maybe a week or two after launch <laughs> when they def- decide to actually fully release it. Because mm-hmm. um, the game honestly does look kind of fun. Maybe having a fun little sports basketball game to play online and do a couple b-ball rounds or something. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Um, but if it doesn't have online, like... I don't. I don't want to just go through the NBA Playgrounds campaign. What are you talking about? Yeah. Well, I mean, for a few days you could, I guess, and get familiar with it, and then finally the online comes out and you're good to go. Maybe. Um, yeah, but I do love like Mario Super Strikers and those kinds of games they yeah. put out. That um, I believe. Yeah, there was there's a few games that were in that kind of street basketball style that just is really fun to play and. I know that on the PS4 for a while they had the um, NBA uh, 2K14 or something out for free. 2K. Or maybe it was 15. I got that. I never really played it, but I was just kind of curious. I thought maybe one day, you know, just online play with somebody else or like with you or something would just would be really fun to do um, occasionally. But yeah, not I would love to genre. sit down and play some NBA Playgrounds. Yeah. Maybe I'd get more into it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm picking up any and every game that comes out on the Switch right now. It's a problem. Speaking of people yeah. picking up any and every game that comes out on this Nintendo Switch, mm-hmm. we got some Neo Geo news, and the games um, are seeing very successful sales, which yeah, isn't a surprise because it seems like everyone that's talking about their Switch is like, yeah, I picked up a few Neo Geo games. <laughs> it's just like, you know, any other console who in their right mind would be just like going to the store and, you know, grabbing the, the Neo Geo titles <laughs> from the market, but... On the Switch, they are. Um, there's plenty of quality Neo Geo games to choose from on the Nintendo Switch eShop, and it would seem as though owners of the console have been lapping them up. Uh, Hamster Co., so Hamster Company, is that the name of it? Interesting name. Mm-hmm. Uh, would, uh, who reproduced the games for Nintendo Switch have reported that sales are extremely strong, with cumulative downloads currently exceeding the 200,000 mark, which is insane. <laughs> like... 
you yeah. know, one or what is that? What would the attach rate be? Is that a one one eighth of the, of Switch owners mm-hmm. have yeah, a, at like least that. one Neo Geo game or something? Um, yeah. Then there's people like you that have ten, so you know, you do the math on that. But uh, yeah, yeah I think people I have are loving three. them. Okay, eh. <laughs> you sure you gotta go count? You got like ten or so. Yeah, Metal there. Slug, Metal Slug three, and then. Um, I like King of Fighters, ninety eight or something like that. I think that's what mm, I got. Okay. But I, I, yeah, I want to get Shock Troopers two, and I want to get that over the top or whatever racing game that we were talking about. Um, yeah. Eventually, those games. Yeah, are. lots of. There's a new shooter on my wish list. Too. I don't know what it is. I forget, but it looks kind of like a, kind of like Graceful Explosion Machine ish, but um, just way more retro and way more detailed in the sprite kind of overload in complexity and yeah but they look awesome they look fun metal slug's playing right now in the b-roll for those watching on youtube and it looks gorgeous metal slug is so fun you need to play more and get and we need to compete for those high scores i don't think i even have it i don't think i own it or but this is three that's playing in the b-roll now yeah um speaking of high scores and switch games uh Rhythm Violence game Thumper is speeding on to the Nintendo Switch on May 18th. Um, Coming straight from the developer, Thumper will be available on the Nintendo Switch very soon. May 18th to be exact, Thumper, the acclaimed Rhythm Violence game, launched on PS4 and PC in late 2016, uh, with the PlayStation VR version being released there as well. And today, um, the developer is excited to announce that Thumper will be available on the Nintendo Switch on May 18th. They said that like three times already. Okay, let's get to the story. Um, a few important notes about Thumper on the Nintendo Switch includes that it has full HD Rumble support, which will be awesome for that game. Um, Rumble Violence. Um, oh, that's the name of the HD Rumble support. It's called Rumble Violence. Uh, and then handheld mode runs in 720 and 60 frames per second, and TV mode runs in 1080 with 60 frames per second. So Thumper, for those of you that don't know, you're kind of like this little um, Egyptian beetle sort of thing, just going down this track, and you have to thump your body left and right to avoid hazards or kind of drift like pull your body into the side when you do sharp turns Mm -hmm. and um with hd rumble i bet that's gonna feel fantastic yeah and it's gonna be awesome so i'm gonna pick that up on may 18th that's gonna be great yeah it depends for me on on a couple things like what the pricing is did they say anything about that um not that i see because we'll probably get more details next week i might maybe. wait until it kind of goes down possibly or there's a deal somewhere for the switch version yeah. because i primarily i own the playstation vr and thumper is one of the demos i have on there and i really think that once i get into thumper i'm probably going to go to the psvr experience for that because it's just really immersive and I mean, I really do want to experience the HD rumble effect, but I just feel the the VR effect with that game kind of tops the HD rumble. So, and I would yeah. I would ex- expect that at this point it's a little bit cheaper on the PSVR version anyway, um, and so I might just go that route, or there'll be a deal on it because they're doing like PlayStation flash sales on PSVR games all the time, and so yeah. Um, I, I think that I'm going to probably play Thumper on the PSVR, which will be awesome because I had yeah. you try out that demo, right, on there? Yeah, yeah. it was really insane. Mm-hmm. Although I, I do have to admit with Thumper, I don't, I'm not too sure. That wasn't necessarily a game that the VR was like, you know, all around you because you were right. pretty much staring down right down the track. Mm-hmm. And so I could imagine that just being a nice, you know, non-virtual reality experience. Yeah, it's kind of like you're riding almost... on the back. You can kind of like lean in and get closer yeah. and you're kind of like – on the back of this beetle going through this track and there's just what's kind of cool about i think the vr effect with that is just all the kind of psychedelic yeah uh, that the, the that's cool going around it. yeah um really fun but game. no I, i'd almost rather maybe with that game have the hd rumble i mean that, that's such a tricky like win-win situation like oh you either get hd rumble or you get virtual reality like what do you want to pick yeah um, but well, that I, seems like, I, I would expect that they have ramped up the hd rumble in this game because you really hit those sides yeah like it really you really hit the sides and it really grinds on you so i i would expect that they really amp it up in those areas which i just really am excited to feel what that's like and i would expect too that it's one of those games that one day it's it probably has some replayability value where Mm -hmm. you know you're going to want to go through that story again and yeah like high scores and all that you know 
um, hitting perfect combos and stuff. Yeah. Speaking of games that'll one day be great, we got some information here on Splatoon, or not Splatoon, uh, Ukulele. Splatoon's uh, always Platonic. great, man. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, Platonic is looking to improve Ukulele's flaws in a Nintendo Switch version. Um, my Nintendo News once again reports that in the days since launch, uh, uh, Platonic has said that as they work toward as they work with speed towards a Nintendo Switch, the dev team has been frog marched back down to the development minds to uncover uncover our next big game update, which will add significant improvements and introduce um, the most requested features. That means stuff like optional ability to skip dialogue faster, bypass cutscenes, reduce those pesky gibberish voices, which are actually, I think, kind of the big charm of the game because that's the whole Banjo-Kazooie thing, mm-hmm. um, which should please the speedrunners among us. And they'll also be looking to add a sprinkling of design polish to the adventure and by popular request changes to how the camera operates. And so from what I'd heard about reviews is that the game was very much so like the original Banjo-Kazooie games, um, you know, in, in almost every facet, which included the classic N64 clunky controllers, um, at least as far as like camera controls go. And so it seems like they're doing their best to maybe pull the game into the 21st century and have us... Um, have some you know more fluid camera controls some bug design polishes and stuff like that so Mm -hmm. it seems like the switch version may be one of the definitive ones to pick up um or maybe not necessarily the definitive edition because those will probably those updates will be coming to the other versions as well but don't feel too bad now about waiting for the switch version yeah i'm I'm pretty excited for this i've you know i've heard so many mixed reviews and things about the game but i feel I have this just kind of hunch that I'm going to be one of those people that really appreciates and, and really yeah. loves the game. I My biggest kind of concern or worry is that emptiness feel that I get. Uh, some people saying that the worlds are kind of almost a little too big or a little bit too uh, few and far between enemies. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I, I think that I enjoy exploring and figuring out all the puzzles and just kind of the completionist in me will not yeah, will be, be awesome. satisfied by it and so yeah i'm really hoping they get on it and get that switch version out as soon as possible because that's where it should have probably been probably like e3s they'll probably give like an official like announcement thing yeah during like a, a you know like a third party b-roll sort of highlight thing and they'll be like and it comes out you know in a few weeks or in july or something like that you know mm-hmm. probably that's probably the time they're saving it for just to get the most attention on it um moving on in the news we have some fire emblem discussion not too much um, a little bit of sad news, actually, depending on your perspective. Um, Fire Emblem Echoes will be the last mainline Fire Emblem game for the 3DS. Um, with the release of Nintendo Switch, many fans are wondering what the future looks like for the 3DS. And while Fire Emblem Echoes is still coming for the handheld, the series producer had said that it'll probably be the last entry for the series that will appear on the console. And then in an interview with Denjiki Nintendo, yeah, Hitsoshi ya- Yamagami talked about the franchise's future and then ruled out future 3ds games and so seems like the timeline for fire emblem is this is the last mainline one on the 3ds then we get warriors on both 3ds and switch and then switch um in spring of 2018 will get its mainline version which will probably be the official transition over um Mm -hmm. so they've i think they've handled that perfectly yeah um, to not you know abandon fans on the 3ds then kind of have a bridge one with warriors um well done Mm -hmm. i'm excited for the for the switch one i've been playing actually tons of fire emblem warriors on my on my phone and it continues to be really fun and just you know pick up a game and play it and collect new heroes and summon new heroes and so they've done a good job at giving out more orbs so you don't need to spend as much money but i don't know how that makes the game makes more money than super mario run did so it's a huge boon for them but but yeah yeah, I I really always want to get more into those games, but there's such for me it's kind of how I I take Zelda games sometimes where they seem I have to put so much time and mm-hmm. energy into them that I I like that about the mobile game is that there is that more pick up and play aspect of it. You don't have to follow mm-hmm. too much of an insane. It's really much more basic storyline. Yep. I just I wish. I could get into those games that didn't have to take me like if there was some shorter experience of it, but hopefully one of these days I can actually sit down and something will inspire me to get through the yeah. whole thing. 
maybe leading up to the Switch version, you can play through like Awakening, yeah, um, Fates, and Echoes. It's just that genre, yeah. you know. Like we love Civilization and stuff. We just love the like yeah. the strategy sort of RPGs and games like that. That like the real time and you know turn based and everything. It's those those kinds of strategy games are always awesome. And so it's yeah. it's one of those genres that it's like so appealing to me, and I love it every time I get into it. But then every Fates time I get a awesome. little distracted, it's like oh crap. Um, so I just got to be go back disciplined to with it. Too. Yeah. Um, moving on. This is just a quick little one that I thought was actually kind of funny. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles two soundtrack, uh, brings the, the own, the, the, the composer of the soundtrack to tears, uh, via my Nintendo news, the sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles is set to launch for the Nintendo switch later this year. And while those who have played the original will know the series has great music, the sequel's composer promised fans that the game soundtrack is going well. According to Yasunori Mitsuda, some of the t- soundtrack actually brought him to tears, mm, which wow. <laughs> I think, I, I don't know. I mean, I've definitely created, you know, stuff before where I'm like, it gives myself chills and I'm like, I'm so proud of this work of art that I've made. But I just imagine him like writing his own music and just crying and being like, this is so good. <laughs> like, look what I've done. Yeah. Playing the piano. It's so good. Um. Yeah, so I thought that was actually kind of a funny story that, like, you know, in an interview where it's just like, hey, how's this? How's the sequel going? I'm actually composing some music, man, that's just bringing me to tears. <laughs> Can't wait for you guys to listen. He, like, plays it for the, you know, the <laughs> meeting of people, like, the the head directors and producers, and they're all just kind of sitting <laughs> there stone-faced. <laughs> He's, like, looking at their faces for their reactions, his, like, tears <laughs> welling in his eyes, and they're just all like, yeah, um... He can't even finish the game. Yeah, He's the like next, trying to play test. Is there anything it. else? <laughs> like, wait, what? Oh. I put my heart oh, and man. soul into this. Yeah. Oh, man. It'll probably be amazing. Uh, I love the, the Xenoblade music. Yeah. It makes me want to go play those games. And especially. Yeah, what was it? Guire Plains or something was. Or what was that song Like that's in Smash yeah. Bros? Cause that was always so great. Like, yeah, the, I always love the Xenoblade levels in Smash Bros. So. Um, this is another quick little kind of more PSA for everyone. Blaster Master Zero update introduces new DLC characters and modes. Version 1.2 for Master Blaster Zero. Wait, that's not right. Blaster Master Zero is now available to download and with it brings a wealth of new content. New modes and DLC characters will, that will be available over time are included in the update for the Nintendo Switch title. You can check out some of the points below for a brief rundown of what you can expect. And then the points below are Destroyer Mode, which is a super difficult hard mode that can be accessed when the game has been cleared. Um, Jason and Sophia 3 will have also have new skins. There's EX Character Mode, which has DLC characters made available over time. And you'll be able to play through, the, these, um, play through with these enjoying their bespoke abilities. The first DL character, DLC characters will be Gunvolt and Ikoro. Gunvolt will be free between the 4th and 17th of May, and Ikoro's promotional period will run between the 1st of June to the 14th of June in 2017. Mm. Um, Kind of our big, meaty topic of the show, before we get into the downloads of the week and say goodbye to all of you, is that we also have our first details on the Zelda Breath of the Wild expansion. Um, once again, no spoilers for the game beyond what's listed here in the DLC. So if you don't know, want to know what's happening with the DLC, go ahead and tune out, I guess. But it's 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 nothing, I promise you. Um, Zelda Breath of the Wild now supports dual language with the update. Um, so hidden within the latest press release is that you can now play the game in multiple languages. Um, but then there's the big meaty stuff that will be coming later this summer. So Nintendo detailed that the upcoming Zelda Breath of the Wild expansion pass um has uh, this to offer first and foremost is trial of the sword um so once you uh, it said it, it's even ambiguous itself by accessing this location players can challenge the new trial of the sword previously known as cave of trials challenge where enemies appear one after another and link starts without any armor or weapons and if he defeats all the enemies in the room he can proceed to the next area Trial of the Sword will include around 45 rooms total for players to complete, and when Link clears all the trials, the true power of the Master Sword will awaken and always be in its glowing power-up state. And so, 
Seems like a really nice in-game reward for completing Trial of the Sword. And uh, seems like it's going to be an awesome, awesome challenge. Because by now, if you've been playing the game for tons and tons of hours, you've probably gathered up some of your favorite weapons, some pretty nice armor. Um, maybe you've, you know, really kind of beefed it up and stuff. And now, <clears throat> pardon me, now you're going to be stripped clean of all of that. And you're going to have to really start from scratch and kind of go back to the, you know, just learning how to play the game all over again with 45 rooms. Mm-hmm. It's going to be freaking awesome. It's just going to make a fun horde mode to play, you know, just redo it again and again and again. Yeah, I really so you beat your time. I was really enjoying the I forget what it was called. It was like the um, Cave of Shadows or something in Twilight mm-hmm. Princess. And that was really fun. I thought after I'd beaten the game and to still have something to go in that was seriously a challenge and that I still I don't think I got through the very, very last bit. I got into like where it was getting all golden and getting all final boss seeming, but I never actually completed it because it was really challenging yeah. to get through. And there was also the goal of um, not getting hit at all so that your heart saved and stuff for the wolf link to bring into Breath of the Wild. And just, yeah, they do a really good job at coming up with these trials. And I would assume that this is going to be even another level beyond what the cave of shadows was uh 45 yeah. rooms sounds like double or something of what what was in that so really excited for that definitely yeah oh i wonder i mean i'm assuming you gather weapons from the enemies you're killing that's what i was wondering if you go like how is there like a basic punch because i was wondering about that if you go in with no weapons or armor at all how would you even defeat one of the enemies Unless you, yeah, like, unless pick you up a to, rock. Like, use your bombs. Yeah, yeah use I guess. Your bombs yeah, yeah. And... That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe you, maybe you just find, like, a twig nearby and just start whacking at them. Yeah. I'm not too sure. Um, another bit of the update is that there is now a new hard mode. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is already considered one of the most thrilling games in the Legend of Zelda series, but fans um, are looking for a challenge, um, or fans looking for a challenge are in for a treat with the new hard mode. In hard mode, the quote ranks of enemies in the games uh, in the game are now increased. So red begoblins uh, change to blue begoblins, and so on and so forth. Um, and players might even encounter higher ranking enemies they wouldn't find through normal play. So do with that as you will. If you've played the game, you kind of know how that system works. Enemies will also slowly recover health in battle, forcing you to defeat them more quickly. So you, you got to be quick on all that. Uh, they'll also more easily spot Link as he approaches them, making these enemies tougher to sneak up on. So you got to be, you know, ready to go. In addition, floating planks held aloft by balloons will be scattered around Hyrule. By successfully reaching these planks, players can battle enemies and collect treasure. Hmm. Which that one seems a little bit peculiar, but I don't yeah. know if you have. Have you experimented much with uh, attaching some balloons to different things? Um, some of the funnest not, things. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't done that enough. I need to do more of that. Um, I've yeah, done a little yeah. bit of it because there was somebody that was like, here, do this and attach a balloon. And it was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. But I definitely... I attached... I, I cut down a tree and attached a balloon to both ends of the fallen tree and made my way up like half a mountain just like holding onto the tree. Oh, really? <laughs> that's awesome. And then when the balloon started popping, I jumped onto the mountain, which gave me like, you know stamina like i was halfway at the mountain with full stamina right so it's actually how i overcame a puzzle and my wife was watching and i'm just like (laughs) hugging around this tree that has all these balloons attached to it and it was one of the coolest things like it's like how does this not break the game that i can do something like this but yeah yeah the cool experiment with that more like there's some stuff that you can attach balloons to and then do other things that really allows you to travel cool and all that so that'll be fun to see the planks scattered around um, yeah, there's also the hero's path mode. Um, exploring Hyrule is exciting, but with such a large world, it can sometimes be hard for players to remember where they've been. To help with the tracking process, the new hero's path mode will document every step players have taken and mark their path in green on the map. The route taken will be tracked for the player's last 200 hours of the game um, with an included slider to track footsteps on a timeline. This even works re- even works retroactively, so players that have already put many hours in the game will be able to see where they have been tra- where they have traveled. Um, this feature will help in identifying the locations they haven't visited in the vast world and help players find those shrines that they haven't encountered yet. So, for me, who's played 150 hours, I'm definitely going to be using this because mm-hmm. I know there's places I haven't even visited, and um, I'm still missing quite a few things. And so I'm going to go. Get yeah, all that stuff that's awesome. And, I really hope it does the thing too, where it shows the little guy walking in his little path. Um, yeah, 
I don't know how they recorded that because it seems like no way that they just had like the map pulled up while the guy was walking. So there must be a, a setting to rewind or watch the, the little progress. Um, yeah, they said really a slider is cool. in- included, so you can slide through. Oh, yeah, through. that must be that. Okay, cool. That's yeah. really awesome because, yeah, that's just – I can't believe they've had that planned in, like, this whole time. And Well, someone was saying – I think Ryan McCaffrey was saying on IGN that it's probably, like, a development tool. They probably needed it themselves to yeah. kind of figure out where they've been and where they're going, you know. Yep, that's that's a good point. And it just makes me wonder, too, like, what other tools they'll incorporate into the next DLC because – it's two DLC packs, right? That we're getting, or am I calling yeah, correctly? I this isn't the only so. one, right? Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. There's this one, and then the next one will be a new dungeon, new mm-hmm. story, mainline quest that thing. Was insane. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah. So presumably, like a new divine beast or something, but right. Or I don't know. Yeah, maybe not necessarily a new divine beast. They something along like in that magnitude with yeah. an i'm hoping it's like hey link we need you to head over to termina because yeah majora's mask is freaking out the moon's falling like how cool would that be if you went to termina i don't think they said there's a new map like a new region but how cool would that be because where are they gonna put this new dungeon yeah no they gotta put it somewhere i guess there's lots of empty little pockets they could just yeah there's ways a i mean doorway in <laughs> like all right let's go into this but um the other bit of news is that the travel medallion is a new thing and there'll be a new treasure chest somewhere in the game world that contains the travel medallion with the travel medallion players can create a temporary new travel point on the map where they're currently standing link can then teleport himself to that point at any time only one travel point can be registered on the map at a time and so if you have that nice actually i know exactly where i'm putting this Hmm. i'm putting on that little you know the mountain i'm talking about the little well, actually, I think there may be a shrine nearby there, but I know you've been there. We've talked about it. There's like a, a, a mountain people see very early on that's, you know, glows in the distance. Right. And I like to, next time I see it glow and I'm going to just travel straight to it. That's, that's a great idea, actually. Yeah, that's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. That's, <laughs> but yeah, that's where I'm going. The, the, the bummer part is, where is it going to be? It says just a treasure chest in the map. What the crap? Where is that at? Hmm. Um, and there's also some new equipment coming, first and foremost being the Korok Mask. By finding the new Korok Mask, players can have a much easier time finding Korok locations in the game. When equipped, the mask will shake, indicating that a Korok is hidden somewhere nearby. And so I actually was using a, a an online website to find some Korok seeds. I'm going to go through and delete all those points that I made and now use this combined with the map feature to hopefully find all 900 Korok seeds naturally um, is my goal. Hopefully, by pittering and pattering around, I can find some of them and maybe use um, a website for like the last 100. But I, I, I have 200 now, and I want to see if maybe I can get at least maybe like another few hundred without using any sort of guide. And so I have 52, um, I think. Oh wow! So I have a lot to go. Yeah. <laughs> I think even because you're like 100 hours in, aren't you, or something like? Uh, yeah, 80 hours. Yeah, I think even then. I mean, I had around like 150 or something. Man, yeah, I don't know. Get What's on going there. on with me. <laughs> Start shooting those apples off trees. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, and the last bit of it um, that's coming with the update is that there are eight new pieces of equipment inspired by previous characters and games in the series that will be added to the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild after downloading the first DLC pack. And once discovered by the player, they will yield equipment themed around after fan favorite games and characters such as Midna, Tingle, Phantom, and Majora's Mask. More information about the second DLC pack will be revealed in the future, and all DLC is available for both the Nintendo Switch and Wii U versions of the game, but you have to buy them all together as the season pass. Um, but I'm so, so hyped for that Majora's Mask um, equipment. Um, the Phantom one actually looks pretty awesome, too. I bet it looks awesome when you're moving in-game. Tingle is perfect. Um, part of me wants to do like a Let's Play series where I play through the game only as Tingle. Uh, <laughs> Like, just throughout the whole game without changing gear once. Just always in the Tingle outfit. Um, yeah. Call the Tingle play or something. Yeah, it's, it's nice yeah. that they'll be hiding him again, too, because that was uh, that my finding my Switch shirt was a mission in and of itself. Yeah. I wonder, yeah, where, where are you going to find these things? Like, is it just, like, randomly scattered? Like, is it, you know... The Great Plateau will probably just be more cluttered with... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just all these chests falling in the sky, like... I wish you, I don't know, I wish there was a different way about going about that, but 
surely Andre Seegers will find it, you know, within a day. And hey, yeah. guys, I found it. Um, and to close out the show, sorry we went so long today, but we had a lot of stuff to talk about somehow this week. People snuck in a ton of news, I guess. Um, uh, is the last bit of news is that we have the U.S. download list for the week of May fourth, twenty seventeen. And so those of you that listen to the show, um, we go through um, the the latest news or the latest games that are coming out this week. Um, kind of give our thoughts on them, give a little bit of the description of the game, so you guys know without even loading up your eShop, what games are coming out this week. Um, And so this week's Nintendo Downloads includes the following featured content. Uh, The Nintendo eShop on Nintendo Switch has NBA Playgrounds. Classic NBA Arcade Action is back. Take your A game to the playground and beat the best in high-flying two-on-two basketball action. Um, Collect your favorite players from a massive roster of current and retired NBA superstars from every team. NBA Playgrounds will be available on May 9th in the Nintendo eShop for the Nintendo Switch console. So just a couple days away. Um, I don't I actually don't think they have a price on that um, that I have here. So sorry about that. And then also Blaster Master Zero has a demo version. Um, we've talked about Blaster Master Zero in the past and all the DLC coming to it this week. And so be sure to pick up that demo if you're trying to if you're curious about the game. And on the virtual console for the Wii U, Bonk's Revenge is coming. Uh, Bonk is back in this TurboGrafx-16 sequel. Bonk's Revenge is a side-scrolling action game in which you jump and bonk, which is headbutting your enemies, while you make your way to the goal at the end of each stage. Double, even triple, your attack power by eating the meat that appears in the stage. There are eight different hidden bonus stages, and the dinosaur train that appears after you defeat a boss will change depending on how many smileys you've collected. So there's the official description of the game. <laughs> okay. Um, Gotta go pick also, that up. Also, if you head to Nintendo.com slash game slash sales and deals, you can find some new deals this week. Uh, there's a new Street Fighter-themed My Nintendo Rewards to celebrate the release of Street Fighter Ultra 2, the final Challengers game for the Nintendo Switch, which comes out on May 26th. And there's also some sales, including 40% off of Street Fighter 4, 2, and... Uh, to our alpha two uh on the th- on the 3ds sorry there, there's so many street fighters on the 3ds wii u virtual console and the 3ds virtual console there we go so you can get 40 percent off for 3d edition to the new challengers edition or alpha two all of which are street fighter yeah there you go mm. And also about this week is Triple Breakout, Blaster Master Zero Demo Version, Infinite Golf, Wing Kings, Citadel, and 15. And I had the descriptions pulled up for Triple Breakout and Infinite Golf, but we're running out of time, so we'll have to talk about those um, some other time. Noah Kinney messaged us and wrote in to um, our little message section. If you want to write in, you can find us on Facebook, or you can email us, copipodcast at gmail.com. They asked a question about Mario Kart 8, um, which I... Um, believe we didn't get a chance to get to. We did talk about ARMS and the, the Pro Controller thing, but they did have some questions regarding the Switch and Mario Kart 8, basically asking if the Switch will die out like the Wii U did and also what the future of Mario Kart is, if they're going to you know continue this Mario Kart 8 formula or maybe go to backsliding to like Double Dash or break conventions altogether. Um, we, we won't be able to like, you know, draw out those two topics, but uh, as far as quick answers... First and foremost, I don't think the Switch is going to die out like the Wii U did, especially after a week like this week where we have just... I just can't remember a time like this in the Wii U's life cycle where just there were so many games that people were excited about, breaking records, DLC season passes that were just captivating people. And as far as Mario Kart, I think Mario Kart 8 is going to be it for quite a while. I think that's our Switch Mario Kart for the foreseeable future. Yeah. But Yeah, I agree with yeah. you. I don't think that the Switch is going to die out. I Yeah, you made good points there um we're seeing record-breaking uh sales with the switch right now and like you said it's like the the zelda game we never got a real zelda game on the wii u besides the ports of like wind waker and twilight princess and everybody was waiting forever for zelda to come out and it came out so late on the on the cycle that people at that point were kind of saying like it's never gonna come out um, they're waiting for their next console to put Zelda on. Just feels like there was never that game that really made people go crazy about. You know, Mario U didn't 
the 3D world yeah. didn't. Um, there was and you Odyssey know, is like eight, people are waiting to buy the Switch just for Odyssey, and people are already buying the Switch. Right. Like, I mean, Mario Kart 8. I think the year when they had, I think Mario Kart 8 and Smash came out the same year. I think that was the best year for the Wii U. Um, and then you know Mario Maker kind of brought a little bit of life and like Splatoon and stuff. They were able to kind of get their start, I think there. And then the Switch, I think, just launches with Zelda and this hype and and Mario Kart and just such a strong start that i think it's just going to kind of keep sailing and i think as long as they can keep supporting it with games that are more serious like putting fire emblem on here which we never got on the wii u um you know like you said odyssey coming out um and then if we ever get the pokemon game of course is always there kind of or monster hunter yeah yeah so definitely think and also um, oh, yeah, sorry. No, real quick. Also, um, Noah Kinney wanted us to give a shout-out to Sophia Young's channel. Um, so shout-out to Sophia Young. Sorry if you weren't if you didn't, you didn't, weren't aware that Noah Kinney put your name in the shout-out bin. Um, and Dark Link in the YouTube chat also says that if anyone wants to add his friend code, um, you can add him for those audio listeners. If you're looking for um, someone to play with, it's 8035-9452-9615. And so you can add Dark Link onto your Nintendo system as a friend and play with him. I don't know what they want to play, if they want to play Mario Kart or you know Mario Golf or Pokemon or... Anything you know, and maybe everything. They, maybe they want to play some NBA Playgrounds a few days after it launches. Yeah. And you got that. And I believe with that we have most, if not everything, of the, the reader mail wrote in. Noah Kinney had quite a bit. I don't know if we got to everything Noah Kinney wrote in, but we, we tried our best, Noah. Um, and I think that's it for the day. Yeah. It's all the scoops we have. Wow. It's been our pleasure serving you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll be back next week with more news, probably giving some impressions, some more impressions on the indie games coming out. Um, I believe, I'll, oh, actually, this uh, week, I'll have some impressions on Minecraft for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, um, that comes out on Thursday. Well, that's a weird release date. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Thursday. So I'll be playing the Mario version. Maybe I'll live stream that. Um, or do some let's plays of that because Minecraft is awesome, and it's a game I don't mind playing on camera because it's not like I need to get like super into it like Zelda or something. So right, maybe we'll give that. But I think that's all we have. So Zach and Lester, something you want to say? Yeah. No. 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 no I'm ready right. to go back to Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah. All right. Until next time. <gasps> cool. <laughs> Was that little like? Eh. I have no idea. Oh. oh man, that was a long episode. Yeah, it was, but it was, it was good. Jam packed too. Like it wasn't even like long, but we like were like stretching stuff out. Like we were, it was long and we were rushing through things. I know. Yeah, it was good though. Yeah, it's the switch is just, just booming. <laughs> it's a, there's the title, switch be booming. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, oh, just, it's kind of almost exhausting. It's just like I get on the Switch now, and it's like, all right. I know I got like Snake Pass, or I want to do some more Graceful Explosion Machine. I haven't even gone past the first world. I've even touched Binding of Isaac or Bomberman since I got it. Um, Heavy Friends in the chat says, only just found this channel as the show ends. But Heavy Friends, lucky for you, we archive the whole show right after it's done. And you can also head over to iTunes and search for Copi Podcast and find us there. And listen to all of our episodes. We have 57 episodes you can listen to. Yeah. And the last ones are pretty good fresh. Good time to become a, go- a Kopai friend. Yeah, part of the Kopai nation. Fan. Yeah. You've been recruited and so dubbed Kopai. Help me solve these Kopai conspiracies. I know that Kaz is in on it. <laughs> with Nintendo. <laughs> I work for Nintendo, yeah. I eat cookies with Bill Trinan. Actually, didn't you eat cookies with Bill Trinan? Yeah, and he told me. It? <laughs> I don't know. He came like to my door or something and told and spilled yeah, the beans. That was when you would read the news and you were like, <laughs> you read the news and we did this whole story where you were hanging out with Bill. <laughs> we did a lot of Photoshop and that. Well, yeah, yeah. That was that was the days of Copai where you would read the news stories, but I was in charge of all the transitions and stuff, and so it was like. 
or like um like getting the b-roll together and getting all of that so it would be like okay zach next story <laughs> you'd be like oh yeah okay and you'd go to the next thing and so it was always like some like super odd like dead air moments of like yeah okay our next story is this oh yes okay our next story <laughs> but um yeah oh man well Oh, we you know what we forgot to do uh, is announce a Kopai Mario Kart tournament. I t- I talked about it. I mentioned it. Oh, that we're gonna do one. I said that we we're gonna like tweet it out or post it on Facebook or something. Oh, okay. I said that in the show. Go back and listen. <laughs> yeah, I was. I guess I was tuning out at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're just not. Even, <laughs> I'm like. I even like said like, oh, we didn't get a chance to get all this together, but we'll we'll have that out there. So. I'm waiting for heavy friends to respond. Hopefully they they just said like I just found out this channel is the show ends. And <laughs> they they probably tuned out. <laughs> They're like, dang it. Oh man. Well, all right. All right. Well, well, that was a long show, and preparing for it was long. So it's just most of my Sunday has been Kopai now. So I'm yeah. gonna go do something else. Get this all uploaded. Hopefully it's saved all right and goes all right. But. All uh, my day has been Kopai prepared. Now I'm going to go play some Nintendo Switch. <laughs> and just <laughs> nonstop Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah, I want to play more like of like Tumble Seed and all that, but Yeah, you need to. I'm so close, so close to platinuming Destiny, and I want to get Destiny knocked out. Like I'm just ready to not like ready to be done where I'm like I don't want to play it anymore, but it's just going to be such a good feeling to be like I've completed this game. Yeah, definitely. So, and yeah, especially and with the gameplay reveal coming up. That kind of stuff is grading, too. It's kind of like once you get in a completionist sort of vibe and you want to go and get it done, you yeah. kind of just you feel, like, pulled to go and yeah. just knock it out. So you can yeah, move one on. Of the trophies, one of the trophies, though, is to fully upgrade my Warlock character. And there's you level up these little circles. Like, once the circle fills up... Um, that's like the new little, you know, kind of talent tree sort of thing. Hmm. And there's probably maybe 50 little um, circles to fill up for the character that you need to fill up. And I have two left. And one of them's almost filled up. So probably just a day's worth of missions will fill up the last two. And that's that trophy. And then the last trophy is to complete either a raid or... Um, a prison of elders which is like their horde mode to complete one of those without dying and so i'm just gonna do i'm gonna have to go to the prison of elders and basically do a whole wave of survival horde mode challenges without dying and once i do that it'll be platinum trophy time so and then i still have to get all the record book stuff for the t-shirt which i'm one level away on that so Hmm. hopefully in the next two weeks i can get that i don't have school or work tomorrow so and then yeah, May eighteenth. It's gonna be so awesome. You gotta play it too. Yeah, that'll be Sucks, gotta... that'll be crazy. I, that'd be cool if I could get on it for Destiny two and everything. But yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I'm thinking you can get the collector the the collection and you get you just you can play through all of the missions and all the story, do a couple raids and then Destiny two will be out and you can just get on the ground level with that. But yeah, hopefully it comes to the Switch. That'd be insane, but I doubt that. <laughs> it's like impossible. <laughs> Um, that's the thing that sucks about the switch is like it can't do those always online games yeah yeah all right yep well go bye bye go bye bye